Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, Ryan here once again. Uh, so I had a truck come in the shop here last week uh, with an SCR conversion uh, efficiency issue. And uh, it's the first time I've ever seen this. Um, so I just wanted, I, I wasn't able to do a video on it because I was so busy last week, but I, I did take a picture of the issue. Um, so we'll put that up there for you guys to see. Then I just wanted to kind of talk about the, uh, the issue that we had and what we found and, um, and kind of unfortunate for the customer what was going on. But um, we'll go ahead and uh, talk, show you guys that picture and we'll, and we'll go ahead and talk about this. So uh, anyways, guys, I uh, had an International Pro Star come in with a uh, Cummins ISX-15. I believe it was a 2012 or 2013 model. Uh, so originally, like I said, the guy came in with SCR conversion efficiency. Um, I think there was some knock, there was a knock, couple knock sensor codes, but they weren't like the dead to rights, uh, you know, like a dew point or failure to activate or something of that nature. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it, it with those types of issues, you know, you really never know what it can be. There's so many things that can can be at play. Uh, so. The customer brought in knock sensors and all that stuff. I was going to go and swap them out, then kind of go through, and then do a region and go through the truck. So, went over to the uh, passenger side uh, skirting underneath the door there and started taking the bolts and everything out. And I kind of noticed there was a big hole um, in the side because it's all plastic. There was a big hole in the side of the plastic, and it, it was melted. And there was there was a bunch of soot and carbon. Uh, so as I kind of looked closer, you could see where the the DPF and the DOC clamp together. And you could actually see, which you can see, um, there was a gap, roughly a quarter inch, to where whoever put that DPF in, it, the clamp wasn't seated, the DPF was nothing was seated. So I mean, I can get that gets to a thousand degrees in there. It's supposed to roughly. So this gentleman actually had a thou like a thousand degree exhaust gases, or you know, roughly six hundred to a thousand degrees, coming out the side of his DPF and DOC where it's supposed to clamp. And when you got leaks like that, it's going to cause those conversion, uh, SCR conversion efficiency issues because the system obviously has a huge leak and it's not, it's not going to get the right temperatures. And uh, luckily for this guy, he didn't burn his truck down because it, it, it very well could have caught that stuff, that plastic on fire. You know, once plastic gets burning, it can be uh, pretty, pretty hard to put out in some cases. If you get a pretty good plastic fire, it's almost like, uh, you know, oil or something burning. So uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. Like I just, I just wanted to do a short video to share that with you guys. And um, this gentleman had actually just had his DPF cleaned like roughly two, three months ago. So um, whoever had done that cleaning, when they put it back together, and, and, and the thing is with those Pro Stars, I mean, they're really, you're on the side of the truck. Everything's pretty easy to get to. I mean, so there's really no excuse for it. Um, I know, but we, we took it apart and we had it back together in a couple hours and ended up just putting the DPF canister in the truck because it, the old one obviously was, it was, wasn't was working properly so it was set it up again and uh, it kind of is what it is. So, But unfortunately a guy had to have basically two, a DPF cleaning and a new DPF in the course of like three months roughly. So um, so kind of going forward or take uh, takeaway from this is that uh, if you get your DPF cleaned, uh, you might want to get underneath your truck and everything because obviously these people didn't even do a regen because during a regen with a leak that big, they would have seen something. I mean, I think they probably just did a DPF reset, sent him on his way. Um, and that's, like I said, unfortunate, but uh, you always want to make sure they, they do a DPF reset, do a regen on it to make sure everything's working properly. Um, and I know my software, it actually generate a report um, with all that, with all the pressures, temps, and all that information after I do a regen. So I mean, that may be something else you can ask them for. And then um, you may even want to get under the truck or whatever and do a visual inspection of where that stuff's all clamped together just to make sure everything's secure down there. Um, because like I said, that, that is, it, could, it could burn your truck down. I mean, so it is kind of a safety issue, but um, not only it's going to cause you further emissions issues going down the road, you know. Um, so, so just check that stuff out and keep that stuff in mind next time you get your DPF cleaned or replaced. Um, like I said, because this was this ridiculous. I've never, I've never seen anything like that to where, I mean, it was right in front of you. I mean, so it wasn't, I don't know how they missed it. Um, but uh, unfortunately it is, is what it is. And um, we got it all put back together and hopefully the, everything's going well for the, for this guy. So uh, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it uh, for this one. Um, just want to share that with you and um, we'll kind of wrap it up from here. All right, guys, so uh, thanks for watching. Um, hope that info helps you out. Um, like I said, just another little thing to look for out there. Um, if you guys are new to the channel or if this is the first video you've watched from us, um, we're always kind of putting this type of information out. Um, we run our own truck shop, uh, mobile service. 
Um, I was an owner operator for several years. We've got a lot of trucking videos out there, older videos we have, a trucking business and, and all that good stuff. And um, we also just bought a new building we're moving into, so that's gonna be a pretty interesting topic. I know some of you might have saw the first video, but um, unfortunately I had to take that down until after everything's closed, but there's gonna be a lot more coming forward with that if you're interested in old buildings and stuff, so check that out as well. So again, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. Um, go ahead and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates and uh, like the video. So we'll see you next time.